Howdy folks, I'm Nouveau Neodymium, nervously naming nine newts. I'm Amber. And I'm nervously naming these nine newts because they've all been turned into newts. These were people. They were people. They were turned into newts by a witch. Not that I'm naming any <laughs> names, mind you. So if I don't get it right, then they'll stay newts forever. It's very stressful. Very stressful. I already got Barry wrong. <laughs> Let's get started. Oh, and folks, before we begin, I just have a quick announcement. We have a live stream coming up this Friday. So please, for additional information, check out the end of the video. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for bringing my new girlfriend to my friend's wedding? Throw away and fake names. I'm a 28-year-old male, and my friend Josh, a 28-year-old male, got married to his partner of seven years, Emily, a 27-year-old female, this past weekend. On the invitation, it was stated that a plus one was allowed. I've been single for most of the time, but one month ago, I got with a girl, Chrissy, a 28-year-old female, who I've known for years. Chrissy used to date Josh on and off in high school and early college until Josh broke things off with her and got with Emily. Due to different circumstances, Josh doesn't even want to hear about Chrissy. I thought that after so many years have passed and we've all matured and grown that there would be no issue. He hasn't talked to her in seven years, but I've kept in minimal contact to the point where we reconnected as friends a few months ago and then we started dating. Assuming that there was going to be no issue, since Chrissy seemed chill with being invited as my plus one, I brought her. I didn't think that I would have to notify anyone about this. Emily and Josh didn't see her at first, but Emily spotted Chrissy once the ceremony was over and she froze. I could tell that she was mad, but was trying to play it cool because of the wedding. I knew from that moment there was going to be an issue. Before I even arrived at the reception venue, Josh called me while I was parking and told me what in the world was I thinking and that Chrissy needs to go home now. I tried to reason with him, saying that I just can't send Chrissy home because her house is more than an hour's drive from the venue. I tried to reason with him, explaining that it's been seven years. If he's mature and really over her, he'll be okay with me bringing her. After all, he just got married. How can he be mad that I brought his ex from over seven years ago? He started screaming at me about how it's the principal, you jerk. The principal. I am over here, of course. That doesn't mean you can just bring her around. It's the principal. Emily is upset because of you and her. Send her home now. I ended up calling Chrissy an Uber, which I paid for. Chrissy was mad at me for giving up so easily and also thinks that I'm weak. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yeah, I think Opie's being a jerk here. I mean, Opie was aware that the friend doesn't even want to hear Chrissy's name. And, like, when in doubt, you always ask the bride and groom if your plus one is going to be okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think that certainly, I think OP was right that they should have been over it because it was seven years. But with, like, what you said, he doesn't even want to hear her name. So that kind of says that there's something kind of off about that situation, right? Well, we don't know what went down. We don't know why the relationship ended. And so, like, us viewers, so, it, like, there could be a very good reason that he never wants to oh, see yeah. her again. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying that OP is in the right here, but I would think that the general assumption would be that after seven years, someone would be over an ex. I don't know. I feel like at a wedding of all places, it's generally accepted that like unless you're close friends with the ex or like co-parenting, like there are some situations where inviting the ex may make sense. Generally, you don't bring people's exes to their weddings. And I think, again, this is one of the situations where OP should have asked first. I think that knowing that there was some kind of bad history there, that it was going to be the appropriate thing to be like, hey, can I bring Chrissy? I know that you don't get along with her, but we, she and I have started dating recently and I just want to check. And that's the thing. It's like, it doesn't cost anything to check and see. It could save a lot of having a drama. It sounds like Chrissy may have known she wouldn't be welcome and just wanted to stir up some drama from her reaction to how everything went down. So oh, I don't know. I didn't really interpret it that way. Why do you why do you think that Chrissy feel uh, knew that this would be a problem? Well, uh, the way she reacts to OP being like, OK, you're going home in an Uber. Like, it sounds like she wanted OP to basically go in with her to the reception 
And uh, like, if I found out that I wasn't supposed to be at a wedding, like, I would be mortified and just want to get out there as soon as possible. But she's like, OP, you're so weak for not, you know, rushing into the reception with me on your arm. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a fair point. I mean, she was not an invited guest and he, she did try a, telling OP to fight for her more. And maybe that was in poor taste. Maybe she was just felt embarrassed and was like, I don't deserve to be kicked out of this wedding. Maybe because I don't know, I wouldn't want to go to a wedding that I felt like I was uninvited to. And if Chrissy was really on such bad terms, if it ended on such terrible terms, then you would think that she wouldn't want to be there either, there, right? Right. But... You would think that she would have checked, wanted to check too. I mean, like, are you sure he's okay with having me there? Yeah. The the question never arose in her mind about whether she would be an invited guest or not. And so that there's a lot of weird things going on here that I wish I knew more about. Mm -hmm. Because I really feel like ew, if she like did something terrible to him, like burnt down his house, then I mean, yeah, she's <laughs> not an invited guest. Of course not. Right. But if it was just like, oh, we don't get along well, and so I think that is a good idea for us not to see each other anymore, that's a completely different scenario, right? And so, again, like Amber's saying, I think if when in doubt, it's a good idea to <laughs> ask the bride and groom. And it's just unfortunate that it caused so, so much trouble on what was supposed to be a happy day for them. And I don't know, like, it really seems bizarre, because it doesn't even seem like he was the one who was upset at first. It seems like uh his wife was the one who was upset more than anything which there may be bad blood between the two of them mm -hmm. and she could have come potentially this is all I, I just love to wildly speculate you know she could just be coming to like upset emily in some way yeah you think emily and her like maybe she with chrissy had emily stole the guy from chrissy right and now chrissy is out for revenge <laughs> Is that what's going on? It could be. It could be. Let me know what you folks think. Help us make up a story yeah. about Chrissy and Emily and why they why they are on the odds with each other. Yeah, post your fanfic in the comments below. <laughs> Anyhow, take care and good luck. Oh, I actually want to add one last thing. I honestly think that OP, at that point in time, should have just taken Chrissy home, right? I think that he should have gracefully bowed out of the uh, reception and said... You know, if my date isn't welcome, I, I'm i really sorry that I messed things up for you here. I'm going to just bow out gracefully and go as well. Yeah, I mean, sending her home in an Uber isn't a cool move. Yeah. But again, let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And username52 says, your RSVP didn't require a name for the plus one? Also, you say Josh doesn't even want to hear about Chrissy. So you know he doesn't like her. Why would you think that he would be okay with seeing her? Did he know that you were dating? And Chrissy wanted you to fight for her at someone else's wedding? You should have just left with her. I'm going to say that you're the jerk because you knew that they had a history and you could have just asked first. However, and I know most people would disagree, I was strongly considering everyone's in the wrong here. This was an on and off relationship seven years ago. When they were kids, Josh broke up with Chrissy to be with Emily. There is something going on here. It sounds like Emily is still jealous. And there are probably issues about Chrissy in their relationship. And OP replies, names weren't required. But to clarify, they didn't break up so Josh could be with Emily. Nor did I imply that. He simply broke up with Chrissy at around his early 20s and got together with Emily after a few months. Their breakup was unrelated to Emily, but Chrissy always made Emily feel jealous. Emily never liked her, and Josh didn't want anything to do with her after their breakup. And username52 said, You said, until Josh broke things off with her and got with Emily. That made it seem like there was pretty immediate. If Chrissy was already out of the picture and Josh already wanted nothing to do with her, then why would Emily be jealous? There is something you aren't telling us. I mean, that's what yeah. I was curious about too, right? And OP replies, There are some details that Josh hasn't shared with me or other people to protect Emily. But apparently, there have been some issues that according to Josh, Chrissy had caused to Emily and him in the beginning of the relationship and Emily despises her. We never found out the details, but Josh and Emily claim Chrissy did something bad. 
which I don't know if I truly 100% believe because it could just be pettiness and jealousy because she's Josh's ex now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> OP, if OP knew that Emily despises her, you do not bring someone the bride despises to a wedding. What were you thinking, OP? Okay, so you're like, oh, my girlfriend could never have caused any kind of... Why didn't you ask Chrissy about what she did to Emily to I make mean, her so mad? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear what's going on here now is that Chrissy has this grudge against Emily yeah. and is like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. <laughs> like, what on earth was OP thinking? Like... I just, it, it, yeah, he's a huge jerk. <laughs> like, okay, I, I mean, I kind of revoke my previous statement now. Now that we know that Emily and her truly do not get along, and that Chrissy may have even done something terrible to them, this kind of puts a whole different light on it. It's not even like, oh, they were together for eight, seven years ago and things broke off, right? This is more like, uh, Chrissy has done some bad stuff. Yeah, it sounds like she may have tried sabotaging their relationship in the beginning or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chrissy may have been jealous of the new relationship and then tried to wreck it in one way or another. And East Hamster says, So, you knew there was a problem between Chrissy and Emily all along. Why would you bring her to Emily's wedding? And OP replies, It's been seven years! We were in our early 20s back then, and now we are almost pushing 30. I couldn't imagine the parties involved would not grow past it and still be petty and insecure over things that happened almost a decade ago. Things that are so bad that OP's friend has never told what they are. Yeah. I mean, come on now, OP. Really? I, I just do not understand this. Like, for me, this is pretty clear cut at this point in time that he just really should not have brought Emily along, uh, Chrissy along. And Miss Nobody 20 says, Info, why didn't you ask if it was okay first? Yes, it was years ago, but you stated that Josh doesn't even like talking about her. So, I don't know what would have possessed you to bring up her as a plus one. And OP replies, Josh didn't want to hear about her sometime after the breakup. After time and years passed, we naturally didn't talk about her. So, it was in the past, and I assume that he no longer had an issue after so many years. I don't know, I still think it was... A bad idea. Yeah, well, and again, a simple, hey, is it okay if I bring her would have been sufficient. Yeah. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, I booked a secret trip without telling my fiance. This isn't really interesting or exciting to anyone but me, but I have to let it out there or I might bungle it and blab in real life. I'm awful at secrets. My fiance is a huge footy fan. We are in Australia and I'm Canadian and he's Australian. He's been following his home team since he was a kid. We have two younger kids, so we don't get out to many games anymore, but he still never missed a single one on TV. The team doesn't usually do amazing, but for the first time in 17 years, they made it to the grand finale. Locally, that's a huge event. It's in Sydney, which is far from us and happening on the long weekend. When they won the semi-final, I asked my partner if he ever wanted to go to the grand finale. And he said, of course, it was always a dream and something that he wanted to do at least once in his life. So I joke that what if we looked up some tickets online to see if maybe we could. He told me that tickets have been sold out for months and he never would have pre-purchased them considering the team's overall record and resale tickets now would be stupidly expensive. Flights and accommodations would also be super expensive as it's a long weekend. Plus, of course, we have the kids who are still a bit young to enjoy a big, loud sporting event. He joked that, hey, maybe in another 17 years they'll make it again. Let's just go then. Little does he know that I planned the trip for us to fly out to see the grand finale months ago. They started off really well this year and I had a feeling that they might make it. I figured that I would buy refundable flight and accommodations and worst case try to sell the tickets and, or take the loss. I've asked his par parents a little while ago if we can plan for a short getaway for the footy finale weekend and they were thrilled to take the grandkids for a day and overnight. Everything is planned and set and confirmed down to the car hire and all the details. I told him that since he loves the fan atmosphere, maybe we could drop the kids off and go to a sports pub to watch it in a good environment. 
he was really excited that I would think to organize it. I'm thinking of holding off on telling him until it's effectively time to pack. I'm so excited, and I usually am not very creative with gifts or gestures, but I'm pretty confident in myself on this one. Edit, I'm thinking of pre-packing the essentials. We've been on lots of trips, and he's consistent with what he brought packs. Leave the carry-on bag somewhere for him to find with an envelope with the tickets inside, so he can pack extra things in it if he wants, but it's mostly pre-done. All right, folks, what do you think of this story? I love it. I it just, I was like smiling while you were reading it. I just hope this, he loves the surprise so much. I'm just like getting excited on behalf of him. I was yeah. like, yes, OP, this is great. Like, I hope you two are so excited and so happy. This sounds awesome. Yeah, I think she should probably tell him a little bit closer than to just bring it on him last moment. But I think that it it is a really nice gesture all in all. Yeah, well, I think potentially since she, like, it's not like she hasn't said they're going somewhere. Like, she said, oh, we'll watch it at a pub. So, like, he is aware there's some kind of event going on. But, yeah, it might be nice to give him a little more notice. Yeah, I mean, sometimes people are funny about travel. And, like, people might need, like, a little bit of time to, like, mentally prepare for a trip or something like that. So... Uh, it's a good surprise, don't get me wrong, but I think that depending on, I mean, she probably knows her partner well, so hopefully he would be fine with a surprise trip like this. Right, like, if he is good with traveling and gets really excited about taking trips and everything, it might be a good idea, but, like, if he's very anxious and, like, has to control every little detail of the travel, then it wouldn't be a great surprise. Yeah. So I'm I'm really happy for them. I think that this turn is going to turn out really well. So I hope that she can keep her secret. And I hope the internet doesn't share her secret too much. <laughs> I'm a little afraid with as many upvotes as this has. It's like, this is probably making it its round somewhere. So if you're in Australia, don't share. <laughs> yeah, but let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And KeyEgg5123 says, this is so sweet, but I have to ask. The team he supports, are they named the Brisbane Broncos? And OP replies, you are correct, haha. <laughs> They're not exactly universally loved, which is why I didn't mention their name. And Chowda Pacman says, it hasn't been 17 years since we were there. He probably never mentioned that we lost the finale in 2015 and erased it from his memory. And OP replies, exactly what I was going to say. We don't talk about the 2015 game. That game is permabanned from our conversation. He said 17 years since they've won. And Y. Cradwin says, Ah no, it's lovely to see your energy and some love on here for once. How sweet of you to arrange this for him as a surprise. How are you going to tell him? He is going to be thrilled. Australians versus Wales would be a good game. Love from a fan from the other side. And OP replies, I'm debating morning of so he can pack or secret pre-pack for myself and do a drive out and then suddenly drive to the airport. Playing with fire a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. And yesterday we had a story titled, Am I the jerk for asking my daughter if she wants to rent out my house after kicking her out? And apparently OP's daughter replied, to this so let's see what op's daughter has to say and upper cheesecake 545 says hello everyone i am the 19 year old daughter of this poster he deleted reddit after he got banned i can prove it but if you look back at my post you will see me talking about the same situation with him there are lots of things that were not included in this unsurprisingly this is all obviously deeper than what was said the girlfriend he's talking about was pregnant and married when he met her. She is still married to this day, and the divorce is not finalized. Sadly, this is all true to an extent, but I'm in cahoots with my grandparents and aunt, who are all trying to help me as much as they can have him not leave in general. A lot of people said that I have been parenting my siblings since I was 13 when my mom passed. My siblings even called me and my girlfriend their moms. He kicked me and my girlfriend out in February, a week after I turned 19, and told us that we had 30 days to get out over my disrespectful behavior, which was me standing up for myself and my siblings. We had been in apartment searching since November, but no place would accept us due to not having credit. We ended up staying in the bedroom of my girlfriend's grandmother's apartment for a month trying to figure out a place to live. The apartment was broken into while we were there, and all around it was incredibly unsafe. 
My dad reached out to us twice during that time and a month ago when I regained contact with him. I hope this explains some of the details that were conveniently left out. Feel free to reach out with any questions or advice. And OP also says, I'd like to say that when he called to pitch the idea two days ago, he said two to three times that he doesn't want us to think he's being selfish, which I know is like, duh, obviously he is. He's wanting it this way so he can still look like a good and involved dad for the outside world. So people still think he's good and around. All right, folks, what do you think of uh, that story? I mean, I, I think... It's unfortunate, and uh, I'm glad she has the grandma and aunt who are kind of helping her out with this whole situation. It's really gross how her father has been behaving and trying to pass it off like, look, I'm being such a great dad while being a terrible parent. Yeah. I also want to add that in the comments, he mentions that his daughter is going to be repaid when he sells the house. So he's making her rent the house, but she'll get the money back, right? So what I was kind of curious about is... Is this house actually partially hers? Because when her mother died, maybe half of the house actually went to the siblings or something mm. to that effect. So his whole deal is actually just not a deal at all. Or it could just be the house is in such terrible shape it's never going to be worth anything. Yeah. So I think that this is a terrible situation. I feel bad for OP. It sounds like she's been doing so much. And the reason why he doesn't view this as like a... In inconvenience to her is that she's been doing this free labor all this time and so now he views this as just the bare minimum required right so her being a parent to her siblings is just required it's not like extra so that's why he doesn't view this as as, as doing anything but a favor for her which just goes to show how much a failure of a parent he is if he his daughter is like, oh, well, you're you're their parent now, so... Yeah, yeah. Let me know what you folks think of that. So anyhow, take care and good luck to OP's daughter. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. Amber, she has another jovial Bob Stein joke. Would you, would you have ever guessed that? So yesterday, uh, I read one of the comments already, and they said yesterday's joke was the worst jovial Bob Stein joke yet. Can we top that, Amber? I love this one. I think this one is fantastic. I've been waiting to share this one. Oh, I'm intrigued and horrified at the same time. What's a zombie's favorite subject? I can tell you exactly what a zombie's favorite subject is, Amber. You see, the, the joke is phrased in such a way that you might think it was about school, right? But it isn't. As we all know, zombies are quite the artists, and so their favorite subject to paint are brains. Latin, because it's a dead language. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. I don't even know if that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. I love it. <laughs> so it's a zombie language, so it's a lot like the zombie is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have liquor spice. And we've got to do Jovio Bob's time because we're coming up on Halloween and I'm mostly out of Halloween jokes from the other book. Yes, it's a requirement. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Taos Day, spelled T-O-W, Amber. <laughs> are we being dyslexic today? We are. We need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please have it in the form of a tacky RSVP back. And bring your ex and we both want the chicken. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty tacky. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Oh bye. Oh and folks, I keep forgetting to uh, to announce this, but we have a live stream on Friday, so please be sure to check out that live stream. We'll see you on Friday. <coughs> you alright? I think so. If you ever cough again while I record, I'm putting you in the penalty box. Yeah. Yeah. It has nothing but jovial Bob Stein jokes in it. I mean, it doesn't sound as much like a punishment as you think it is. It'll be wallpapered with the pages of your book. That, that, <laughs> I would be very upset. <laughs> These books are hard to find, you know. They're not that valuable. Like this was like three bucks, but you know, they're not easy to find these days.